So if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up, leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So I hope you enjoy this story. So as you listen to me telling this sleep story, you can just allow your eyes to close and get yourself comfortable and allow yourself to begin to relax. And as you begin to relax, I'll just tell this story in the background. And it's a story about a gardener. And the gardener is out one day in a garden, in a park, in a city centre. And that gardener is churning up the mud in a flower bed and planting some seeds in that mud and then they move on to the next flower bed churn up the mud in that flower bed plant some seeds in that flower bed before moving on to another flower bed doing the same again and most of the work that the gardener does, they do after sunset and late into the night. Because this way the park is empty. The park's closed, everyone's gone home. And so they enjoy the peace of the park at night. And how quiet the park is at night. That in the evening, just as the sun is setting, there's the last sounds of the birds as they all fly into the trees to settle down for the night. Then after the sun has set, so the gardener can notice sounds of bats flying around, the occasional sound of a bird in a tree, can notice foxes walking across the park, in and out of the lights lighting the park, and they enjoy doing their job in the evening where the temperature is a bit cooler so they can work hard and yet not work up a tremendous sweat and they also don't have the problem of so many birds trying to eat the seeds that they plant and so after planting the seeds they go around the flower beds watering those flower beds and then they take a break relax down in a chair eating some food drinking a warm drink feeling the slight cool breeze on their face gazing up at the sky just noticing the way the stars twinkle in the sky. The way the clouds are illuminated by the moon. And just noticing that very slight movement of those stars arching across the sky. And they work right through the night. And as the morning comes round, they've finished mowing the grass. They've cleared up the park. 
they've sown seeds in the flower beds. And they hear the morning birds announcing the arrival of the early morning sun. Then that first light as the sun begins to rise. And this morning as the sun begins to rise, so they see a man walking across the park. And so they stand up and walk towards that man to let them know the park isn't open yet. And they're curious how this man got in the park. Because the park gates are all locked at night. And the park has high fences. So no one should be in here until it's opening time. And the man walked over to them and said that they're a wizard. And the gardener thought that just sounded strange. The gardener didn't take them seriously at all. And the wizard said that they can prove it. And the gardener asked them to do so then. And the wizard waved his hand and said, look around you. And the gardener looked around and the flowers in all the flower beds had grown up. And the wizard said, I've got something to show you. And the gardener was finishing his shift now. His last job was to open the gates. And as he leaves, so the park is open for the day. So the gardener says, I've got to open the gates. I can't come with you because I need to do this job now. And the wizard said, this will take no time at all. And the gardener was curious about his emphasis on this taking no time at all. And so the gardener started following that wizard. The wizard waved a hand. And what appeared almost like a rip in some fabric appeared in front of the wizard, taller than the wizard and slightly wider. And it just seemed to appear like a rip in space. So the gardener watched as that wizard walked through that rip in space. And he followed through that rip, and he found himself in a place that looked just like the park, except that all the colours were reversed, and the park seemed back to front, and it felt almost like a mirror image or a mirror and negative image of the park. And he looked around this strange space. And the first thing he noticed was that he couldn't feel any breeze anymore. He couldn't feel the warmth of the rising sun. He couldn't hear the sounds of the morning birds. And then he noticed a bird mid-flight, just hovering motionless in the sky. And he realised that somehow time here has stood still. 
and the wizard turned around, looked back at the gardener, and confirmed, here, in this space, is a rip in space and time, to a time that's in a moment, and that when you understand time, when you understand space, you understand that it's all made up of individual moments, that each moment collapses a moment later, as a new moment is formed, but that with his abilities, he can rip in to a moment, and you can walk into that moment, and within that moment, time stands still, and when you leave that moment, you pick up where time left off, as if no time has passed. And to the gardener, this all seemed strange, seemed very unusual, seemed like an experience that they would never believe were they not actually experiencing it. And even experiencing it, they had their doubts, because it was so surreal. And this wizard explained that the reason that they've come here to talk to the gardener is that the gardener has something to do, that they need to find a diary. And the wizard could say where the diary is hidden but the wizard themselves can't actually access the location of the diary. Because the only way to access the location of the diary is to activate that location. But only the right person can activate the location. And the wizard explained that they are that right person. That the diary was placed in a location by someone off in their future. And that only someone of the same DNA lineage is able to access the location of that diary. And the gardener questioned this, saying that none of this made sense. They had some level of accepting the situation because ripping through space and time makes no sense. But they didn't understand how someone in the future who was descended from them, could have placed a diary somewhere where they could access it in the present, because wouldn't that diary have been placed somewhere in the future? And the wizard explained that that person in the future went back to the past, met with their grandfather, And together they placed the diary somewhere safe. Where it would only be accessed when the time is right. And that now that time is right. And the gardener had more questions. Why does the wizard want access to the diary? 
should they be allowed access to the diary? Why was the diary placed in the past? Why not just stored somewhere safely in the present? And the wizard explained that they actually come from the future. They've been sent back by the relative of the gardener. And that they couldn't go all the way back to the gardener's grandparent who helped to lock away that diary. Because they couldn't pinpoint a location that that grandparent is. There was only one known location of the grandparent, and they had already been back there when they met with the grandparent to hide the diary away in the first place. So they couldn't go back a second time to the same time and change that time happening. So the gardener didn't really understand. He wanted more evidence or proof that this was somehow legitimate. How would he know that this wizard isn't somehow trying to trick him? And so the wizard explained that he was sent back by that relative and that the gardener would just have to trust him. The gardener wanted to know why is this diary needed? What's so special about the diary? And the wizard explained that the diary is now needed because in the diary that relative in the future wrote down about a project that they were working on and that that project that they were working on was about a way to cross vast distances in the galaxy in such a way that you could travel many light years and you could return many light years and yet all your relatives and loved ones wouldn't have grown old and passed away due to the nature of time and that it was the early stages of that research that allowed the creation of the technology to be able to create these rips in time and in space. And that the rips in space and time are static. You have one way in and one way out. And you can create two rips in space and time. Connecting two different points in time at the same point in space. But what no one has figured out, but is in the diary, are the equations to allow the rips in space and time to be moved, to be placed in different locations. and combined with a way of travelling faster than light. And the wizard explained that you could go through a rip, you could get a spacecraft through a rip, you could travel at incredible speeds through that rip, where time outside the rip is standing still. But the reality is you're still aging while you're traveling. And so there are issues with that way of doing things. And the gardener couldn't really understand this. He didn't understand how this technology could work. And the wizard explained that 
any technology that's suitably advanced appears like magic to people who are less advanced and explain that the way they manage to make the plants grow, this ability to rip space and time makes them appear like a wizard. And yet, any reasonable person would know that that can't be the case. And so it's down to the technology. But the gardener still wanted to know why they need the diary. Why can't their distant relative just get the diary and use the diary? And the wizard explained that there's a competitor and that that distant relative has been kidnapped by the competitor and that when they were about to be kidnapped they said to the wizard to go back to this specific date and time that they know that that relative of theirs at the time did a job that allowed them to do the same hours day after day after day and the location was in the same city and that that relative had it planned already that if anything ever happened this is the way it would work. That they knew where the gardener would be on a given day. They knew what his job was, what his hours were. And there was also stories in the family passed down through the generations about that relative who claimed to have a strange experience in a park once where a wizard appeared and so they knew enough details to be able to know this was going to happen one day and that everything works out. And the gardener still had no solid evidence to trust this wizard. But they decided to find that diary and find the answers. And the wizard said that the diary is needed to find the answers that will allow them to be able to manipulate their technology so that they can rescue that relative so that they can have openings in different places so that they can traverse that distance without time passing and that they can then make sure this technology doesn't get into the wrong hands that these companies in the future are larger than law enforcement and are actually what rules the time period that unofficially they control what happens. So there's no other way. There can be no support from law enforcement because the other company would just refuse to allow it. And so the gardener gets told where the diary is being kept. They then leave the rip in space and time with that wizard, finding themselves back in the park. The rip in space and time seals up. They notice that the sun hasn't risen any higher in the sky that time genuinely seemed to stand still. The wizard said that they'll meet again when the time is right. And the wizard walked off across the park 
and the gardener left work, opening up the gates to the park, leaving the park, and they travelled out of the city, travelled well out into the country. They then hiked their way through forest, crunching their way through dry leaves and branches, hearing the rustling leaves of the trees as the wind blows a breeze. Arriving at the foot of a mountain, they begin to climb their way up that mountain working their way near the summit of the mountain, well above the tree line. They enter a cave, noticing how that sound changes as they walk into that cave, the way the wind begins to whistle into the cave. They walk deeper into that cave, And at the back of the cave, they see a panel on the wall and what looks like a solid metal door. And it appears like no one's been up here for a very long time. And they place their hand on the panel and the door slides open. And they walk inside. And they see, in the middle of this room, as the lights flicker on, a handwritten diary. And they pick up that diary and they start looking through it. And they see that it's a mixture of describing the ongoing process, day to day of the research and pages with equations and experimental data. And they try to work out what time period this diary is from. But there's no year date in the diary. And they find it unusual because the diary looks like it's been there a long time. And yet it looks like a far more modern diary. Not a diary from the kind of age it looks. And so they take that diary, leave the cave, head down the mountain, back down into the forest. They walk through the forest, they travel back to the city, and they travel home. And at home, they sit in front of a fire, relaxing in front of that fire, reading through this diary. And they notice in the diary, there's a single line entry mentioning them and their experience. and mentioning their description of how a wizard visited them. And that single line entry went on to explain if anything should happen, to get them to find the diary, because they know that's what's meant to be, because it's already happened. And the gardener knew that they were going to have to go to work again soon. as it was starting to get later into the evening. So they went off to work, and they were tired, having barely slept, just a little bit of a nap during the afternoon, after arriving back home. And so they 
realised it was getting late and they had to go back to work. And they took the diary with them, headed back to the city park, entered the city park, locked the gates behind them, checked the city park for anyone left in the park, before locking the final few gates. They got on with their job as usual. And then sat down to have some food. And while they're eating their food, so they saw that wizard again walking towards them. And they stood up to walk to the wizard. And the wizard asked if they've got the book. And they explained they found the diary. What's supposed to happen next? And so the wizard opened the diary and started reading the notes. And then said they know what they need to do. And they said to the gardener to come with them. The gardener came with them to a rip in space and time that the wizard had somewhere else in the park that took them to their time in the future. The wizard said to the gardener to come through this rip in time and explained that this rip in time connects to a rip in the future so that stepping through this rip You'll come out in the same location in the future, unlike the previous rip that the gardener had been through, where you walk through the rip and you're essentially in no time. And so the gardener followed the wizard through that rip. Notice that they're in what looked a reasonably similar park as the one he'd left. And the time of day was different. But the park continued to look reasonably similar. And near the rip was a van. And the van looked more sleek than vans he'd seen. But it still looked reasonably familiar. And the wizard and the gardener got in the back of the van. And the gardener realised this is where all the computers were. This is where everything was being powered from and programmed from. And the wizard typed in codes and did stuff on the computer that the gardener didn't understand. They wouldn't have understood even if they were watching someone in their day typing on a computer. And the wizard explained that this is going to allow them to make a rip open in the location that their relative is in, while having the other part of the rip open here, where they are. And the two bits of rip will be connected like just stepping through from one location to another. And that it's about using a different way of working out coordinates. That it's not like you can measure in miles or kilometers or in some other arbitrary measurement system. It's about being able to Use a fundamental measurement of space-time, working out two points at an exact moment in time. And that for very long distances, even with these equations, it'll be very challenging. Because where you see something in space, 
like a star in the sky. That star in the sky isn't actually where you see it. That's just where it was in the past. So part of what the equations are, part of what the working out is, is about compensating for that. And that, the wizard said, for just moving somewhere quite local, you don't have to worry about that. Because where that place is, in this exact moment in time, is pretty much where that place is in this moment in time. So although the earth is spinning, as well as hurtling through space, as soon as the portal opens, it opens and remains in its location in relation to where it is. It becomes a part of the environment. And the gardener didn't really understand all this. But the wizard was trying to say, this is much easier than what this technology, what these equations are really designed for. And they know where the relative is being held, that they've been kidnapped specifically to try and get this technology. Because this technology could make someone incredibly rich if it was monopolized. If there was one company that was able to say, we can easily and affordably transport people anywhere in the galaxy. And so they turned on the machine. A portal outside the van opened up. The other side of the portal was a corridor. The wizard and the gardener walked through the portal. The wizard remotely closed that portal. They walked down the echoey corridor. The wizard said they knew where to head, so the gardener followed the wizard as they found their way to a room and they could see through the window that in that room was this relative and the wizard was trying to work out how to access the room and was trying to figure out how to open this door. And then the gardener took a knife out of their pocket and the hinges for the door were on the wall on the outside of the room. And so although the lock looked really heavy duty, really difficult to manage to break into, and was intentionally chosen as a mechanical lock so that it couldn't be hacked into electronically, the gardener was able to pop up the pins with the knife. And then they were able to just move that door out the way. And the gardener said there are many instances where people try and break through the part that looks defended without realising there's an easy way in that's undefended. And the gardener explained that this kind of situation is common. People put heavy duty locks on doors to try and stop people breaking in and yet leave the hinges visible. And that because this is obviously designed to stop people coming out rather than to stop people going in. The designers have obviously not thought about someone doing this. 
that this society has become so technologically advanced. They've thought about going old school on the locks, so that you can't break in by overriding an electronic lock. But they haven't thought through that someone might just go through the hinges. The hinge brackets themselves were buried into the door and the wall. Yet the hinges were visible. And the relative smiled and acknowledged the two of them and said, I knew you'd come. And the three of them went back to that corridor, opened up the portal, walked through the portal and found themselves back at the van. They closed the portal behind them. The relative said, I can't tell you much about what time we're in. All I can say is that when you go back, just continue to tell that story about the wizard that visited you in the park. Tell the story about that wizard and the story about the portal, and the story about the rip in space and time. And no one will believe you, but by telling that story, it'll carry through the generations, and it'll get to me, and I'll know what to do, as I have. And so the gardener never found out which relative in the future this was. Just knew that they were probably a great or a great great or maybe even a great 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 grandparent of this relative. And the wizard showed them back through to their time before leaving. They completed their job for the night. And the next morning, having not slept for a few days, they went home, they had a hot bath before going to bed. And as they relaxed asleep in bed, so they wondered about the future. They wondered what happened next with that relative. Whether that relative ever managed to advanced space travel, space exploration, what the consequences were in relation to those who'd kidnapped that relative, whether they tried again. And they like to think that they probably didn't try again, and that if they had, they would get another visit. And with that thought, they drifted and relaxed, deeply asleep.